Well, 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 here's Mama Bloom's brood. Yetta and Harold have eloped. Why, we don't know, nor do Mama and Papa Bloom. In fact, the elopement is the subject for discussion now between Mama and Papa. (laughs) Just like I always said, the boys in the hand is going to get away later or sooner. Couldn't it? Why should you talk about boys? Boys is as good as anything to talk about. No, no, not when we got other things to keep us busy. Who's busy? Who's busy, (laughs) yes. Who's busy? Who? Yetta and Harold. (laughs) You know, Jake, it's funny. Just the other night, there we were making plans for the wedding. Mm-hmm. I was getting myself all ready to get tired after the wedding. <laughs> yeah, Mama. So was I. <laughs> that it was Harold's fault. Why do you think that? Well, Mama, there's Mo Fink. Monroe. To me, he's Mo. To the rabbi, he was Mo. Never mind that now. What worries me is the presents. Presents? Mm-hmm. What presents? The presents yet and Harold don't get. <laughs> that's what I like about you, Mama. How can you worry about something you don't get? Jake, that's the trouble with the whole world. It's like the old adverb. What you don't know is what worries you. Well, would you say that again, Mama? No. So I'm saying that it's like when you get a lot of money. Then you worry about how long it'll last. But when you ain't got the money, then you worry about what you ain't got. It's always worry, one way or the other. Yeah, well, right now, Mama, right now I'm worrying about Yetta. You should worry about her. Sure, sure, she's my daughter, I should worry. She's mine too, but I don't worry. Yet as a smart girl, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> she does, huh? Eloping with, with somebody like Helfink. Mm, you would worry if she eloped with anybody else. Mm, you're right, Mama. For the first time in 20 years, Mama, you're right. Mm-hmm. For the millionth time in one year, I say don't worry. Now look, Becky. One daughter we marry off with a big wedding. Yeah. We wear tight shoes and tight clothes. We make ourselves miserable. Then we want to do it all over again. You know, Mama. Maybe we shouldn't worry. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's all for the best. Yeah, Jake. Now we've come to a municipal agreement. No, no, no. no. Not, not municipal. No. You mean mutual. Mutual or municipal, so we don't fight about it. Uh, with a son-in-law like Sydney, I have worries. So I have to get another one like Harold Fink. His papa's rich. Maybe you think I should care about that? Maybe you don't think I could buy and sell more things? Monroe. Even with Monroe, maybe I could buy and sell him. I don't care about Harold's papa. <laughs> Yet is not married to him. No, Duncan Gutt. <laughs> she is married to Harold. Who said she wasn't? Who said she wasn't? Well, nobody said she then was. Then why'd you raise up the subject? Maybe you're talking in Ring Around the Roses. <laughs> on one side of me, I got Sydney, who makes uniform business out of my knee pants factory. Now, on the other side, I got Harold. So you won't get lonesome. <laughs> Sometime, Mama. Sometime, you know. I think we should live on an island. <laughs> Sometimes you got good ideas, Jackie. <laughs> yeah, sometimes even you know it. <laughs> well... We can't cry over spilled soup. No, 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 Mama, not soup. Spilled milk. Milk or soup, they're both hard to mop up. Answer the door, Jake. I ain't got my shoes on. Put some on. It might be Mrs. Fink. And why should I put on shoes for Mrs. Fink? Jake, answer the door with shoes on. All right, all right, Becky, all right. Hello, Pa. Ah, how's tricks, Pa? You should talk about tricks. Mom? Yeah, Mama's home. Come on in, come on, come on. Well, Pa, over the shock yet? Shock, shock. What now? What do you mean, what now? Just what I said, did we... Did we buy more floor space? (laughs) Not yet, but we'll get around to it. (laughs) You should live so long. All right, all right, what are we standing here for? Come on, come on, come on in. Hello, Ma. Oh, Jake. 
Harold, so there you are. And Sydney. <laughs> Hello, Ma. I suppose you're going to say that Yat and Harold eloped again? <laughs> Once is enough. Yeah, uh, you're right, Sydney. Once is enough. <laughs> Tell me, why did you stand by and let them do it? Oh, you ought to be glad, Ma. Think of all the trouble you're saved. Trouble? What's trouble? Well, you don't have to worry about musicians, about the food, about new dresses. No, don't worry about that. She never worried. <laughs> no, sir. Mm. I, I worried. Oh. So, Sarah, you think yet you're doing me a favor? Well, we did Pa one. Now he won't have to wear his dress suit again. I won't. Well, I like to wear it. It feels good. Yeah, when I take it off. Look, Sarah, you shouldn't think that you are doing me favors. I like to worry about things. It, uh, re re takes my mind off my troubles. Well, Harold and Yvette like to be independent, so we thought we'd give them a lift. A lift? Sure, you know. We were talking about everything that night, and Sidney thought it might be a good idea if Yetta and Harold would just steal a march on everyone. Sure, sure, Sidney would think of somebody stealing something from somebody. Even a march shouldn't be stolen. But what is this independent business? Well, don't you see, Ma? Yetta's wedding would have come so close to mine, and you'd have had everything to do over again. People might think you were trying to rub it in. Rub it in? Look, Sally, I'm a mother. And I'm like mothers, lots of mothers, all mothers. For plenty of years, I took care of you and Yetta. Now you want to be independent. You want to cheat me out of worry that I like. That's why we like being mothers. We can worry about our children. And when we worry about them, then we know they're all right. It's when we don't worry that they get into mischief. Well, then, think of Yet and Harold. This is the 20th century, Ma. And what's so different about the 20th century? It's just got a different number. People don't change. Oh, but youth does, Ma. Youth changes from year to year. Is that so? And what's different about you from me? Oh, I don't mean we're so different in look. We are so different... Let him finish, Jake. Maybe he's coming to our climate. You mean climax, Ma. With an X or a T, he's talking. I never knew him when he wasn't. Go ahead, Sidney. Well, you see, we got to talking about things and figuring things out. Now, the youth of today has been accused of depending too much on things thrown in their laps. That's right. Things should be thrown at their heads. But Harold and Yvette didn't want everything given to them. You and Ma went to so much trouble for our wedding that Yvette figured she didn't want to cause all that trouble. She wanted to get off on the right foot. Make it both feet and I'll feel better. That's it. Those kids have got both feet on the ground. They started off right. Uh, and you and Sarah didn't? Is that it? Oh, no, Ma. It's not that. Sidney and I will never forget how wonderful you and Paul were. Oh, so yet and Harold didn't want us to be wonderful to them. Well, that's not it either. But with all the money Harold's father Stop has... Stop talking and... about his money. That's just exactly what Harold said. What? He wants people to stop talking about his father's money. He wants people to know that he can get along by himself, that he can be independent. He wants to forget about his father's money. He wants to forget about it. What kind of a world is this when the son should forget about his father's money? I see what Sidney means, Jake. Oh, you do, huh? Then you see more than I do, Mama. That's what I've been telling you for over 20 years. I'm it wrong takes again. you until now to hear me. Go ahead, Sidney. Well, that's about all. A young man should depend upon himself, not on anyone else. He should get out and earn his own living. Ah, now, now you're talking sense. <laughs> for a while, I was afraid. Yeah, and yet and Harold won't live with the Finks. Of course not. Who said they would? Mrs. Fink. That's silly. Harold will make enough money to support Yetta and himself. They don't have to live with Mr. and Mrs. Fink. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. One house is not big enough for two families. I'm glad to hear it. Well, you see, I was... Uh... Answer the phone, Jake. Maybe I should put on shoes to answer it? It might be Mrs. Fink. Answer yeah. the phone before it gives us this connection. All right, Mama. All right, all right. Hello? Yeah? This is Jake Bloom. Who? Granite. Granite, you? <gasps> That must be Yvette calling from Greenwich. Hurry, say hello, Jake, quick. Wait a minute, Becky. Hello? Do I what? What charges? I didn't call anybody. What kind of a phone call is a COD one? Oh. Yvette reversed the charges. Harold didn't have much money in his pocket. So he starts out independent with no money. Jake, talk to them. I'm figuring it out on paper. Maybe it would have been cheaper to have the wedding. I want to talk to Yvette. She ain't on the phone yet. I ain't decided whether I want to talk. I do. Give me the phone. But you told me to answer. And you did. You said hello. For $2.92, I get to say hello. I could go to the neighbor's, Mom, and do it for nothing. I will do the talking. All hello? Right. Bell, hurry up. They're putting the call through, she said. All right, all right. Oh? oh hello, Yvette. Where are you? Greenwich? What in Greenwich? It's not here. Oh, Harold is. Well, Harold was here. Did you have to go to Greenwich to see him? What? No, 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 no. No, we don't worry about you. But Mrs. Fink has had a relapse. Collapse, Ma. Be quiet, Sally. Hello, Yetta. Yetta, are you married? You are. That's good. That's good. <laughs> when are you coming home? What? What honeymoon? 
Look, yes, if Harold don't have enough money in his pocket to use the telephone, how are you going on a honeymoon without any... Oh, I see. All right, yes, yeah, what's the address? Did you see this hotel? Yeah, I heard it. All right, darling, all right. Goodbye. Uh -huh. What's she saying, Ma? Everything's all right, huh? Oh, they're going on a honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> Jake. Jake, you have to be like a mule. <laughs> they're going on a honeymoon. You're right, Sydney. They're going to be independent. They're going to tell the hotel company and the railroad company that they are independent and don't have to pay. <laughs> Jake. Jake, get out the checkbook. Checkbook? What for? For the honeymoon. They need money. They are independent. They should need money. Harold was going to call his mother. What for? For money. Well, why didn't he? Two dollars and ninety-two cents. He makes me spend so I can spend more money. Jake, Yvette is our daughter. Why should she have her husband call her mother-in-law? Maybe you would like Monroe Fink to think we couldn't afford a little honeymoon? It's... All right, Jake. I'll call Yvette back and tell her. You keep away from that phone. Anytime I don't afford a honeymoon for my daughter, I'm a crazy man. I'm a chicken now, so what's the difference? Send it to the Cedars Hotel in Greenwich. To Mr. and Mrs. Harold Finch. Independent, ha. Huh? Nah, don't worry, Pa. Harold will be able to pay you back as soon as they get back from their honeymoon. Pay me back. Pay me back. So he's going to borrow money from his father so he can pay me back. <laughs> That's one thing I don't do. I don't take money from more things. Oh, of course not. It's like I always said. Here we are worrying about not having a wedding. After all, there's one thing we do for our children. We give them things. Now we can give them the honeymoon instead of the wedding. <laughs> All these things come out all right, one way or the other. Sure, Ma, that's it. Hey, wait a minute. If Harold's not going to get money from his father, where is he going to get it? Well, he's going to be independent. He's going to get a job. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Well, what's he going to do? Sell independence. Sidney, <laughs> uh, tell us, how is Harold going to get a job? Well, we got it all figured out. Uh, Harold and I. Oh, wait a minute. I he's coming this... He's coming into the business with us, Pa. He's going to be my assistant at the office. Oh. <laughs>